Moorland in the Eden Valley is a good base for exploring eastern Cumbria. The area is characterised by rolling hills and farmland. Moorland is believed to have been settled for at least 1500 years. The Milliard Cafe is a popular meeting place at breakfast time. It's just next to the bridge over the Newby Beck. The village is centrally located in the valley, a scenic rural area lying a few miles from the Lake District to the west, the Pennines to the east and the Yorkshire Dales to the south. The grounds of Moorland House, the Grade II listed former vicarage dating back to the mid-16th century, are open to the public, free of charge. At the top corner of the garden, a small gate leads to the Church of St Lawrence, with the only Saxon tower in Cumbria. A Viking sword was found buried in the churchyard in the 19th century, suggesting Viking influence in the area. There's a topiary rabbit by the churchyard entrance. Back in the garden, steps lead down to the stream, with riverside walks and a secret Victorian quarry garden, complete with grotto and waterfalls. There's a lovely display of fritillaries. We left Moorland over the ford. Driving to the next village of Molds Meeburn, we saw this heron on the way. This tiny village, with a stream running through the middle, dates back to the 12th century. To the southeast is the market town of Appleby in Westmoreland. Just off the market square, the Church of St Lawrence, dating from about 1150, is a Grade 1 listed building. The River Eden flows through the town, and there's a pleasant walk along the bank. Originally called just Appleby, it was the county town of Westmoreland, until local government reorganisation merged Westmoreland into Cumbria. It was renamed Appleby in Westmoreland in 1974 to keep the old county name alive. The town's famous for the four-day horse fair, which is held in the first weekend in June. It's billed as the biggest traditional gypsy fair in Europe. The earliest known record of the fair dates from the 12th century. A shortcut across the playing field leads back to the market square. Not far from our base, Larch Cottage Nurseries was started 20 years ago and features a medieval courtyard and Gothic plant house. Romanesque style ruined walls accommodate individual gardens entwined with selling areas. This little bird has made a nest in a tree, temporarily removed from sale. The massive earthwork monument of Mayborough Henge, believed to be four to five thousand years old, stands right alongside the M6 motorway, one mile south of Penrith. The circle is built of river cobbles, and it's believed to have been a meeting place. In the centre is a single nine foot high monolith, the only remaining one of four. To the west is the northern end of the Lake District, and the first place we come to is the 13th century Watermillan Church, which serves the northern end of Oldswater. 
Further down the lake is the National Trust car park for Air Force. The one mile round trip to the waterfall starts gently enough, across a flat area of woodland. Soon however it begins to rise, giving good views of the river in the valley and the surrounding fells, with a glimpse of Ullswater in the distance. It then descends to the bridge over the falls. <laughs> the path then turns back down the other side of the stream, from where you can see a new viewing platform being built. Back in the valley bottom it recrosses the stream to return to the car park and cafe for a welcome hot drink overlooking the fields and fells. And of course you didn't stop it. Yes. A little further down the road is Glencoyne Bay, where there's easy access to the water's edge. Here is a good place to watch the different types of craft that use the lake. One man brings his paddleboard every day to use as a platform for feeding the swans. At the bottom end of the lake is the village of Glen Ridding, a good base for walkers and climbers heading for Helvellyn, England's third highest mountain. At the very foot of the lake is Patterdale. This is sheep country and the newborn lambs are still a bit unsure as to who is mum. Ah, there she is! The tiny hamlet sits at the side of a stream and is surrounded by farms. Back at the top of the lake, a narrow road follows the eastern shore coming first to Howtown, where there's an outward bound centre. Then it climbs up through Martindale and down into Sandwick where it ends. Here in this environmentally sensitive area the mountain streams flow into Bullswater. A footpath follows the lake edge back to Howtown, passing spring blossom and new plantations. It's got to be better than cycling over the pass. Even by car it can be a bit hair raising. Hutton in the Forest is a beautiful house on the northeastern edge of the Lake District. It was built between the mid 14th and mid 19th centuries. The house is surrounded by beautiful gardens with lots of topiaried trees, this one resembling a train. The gates to the walled garden represent pear trees. The front of the house overlooks the extensive grounds, with paths mown in the grass. A look back gives a good view of the whole estate. To the north of Penrith, a network of narrow roads leads to a group of picturesque fellside villages along the eastern edge of the Eden Valley. Near to Selkeld is Long Meg and her daughters, 
a 350-foot circle of 69 stones dating from 1500 BC. 12-foot tall Long Meg, which is decorated with mysterious symbols, stands 60 feet outside the circle. The circle was probably used as a meeting place or for some form of religious ritual. The village of Melmerby overlooks an 11-acre green, where the villagers still have traditional grazing rights. At the bottom of the green and across the road, a footbridge leads to an old sheep pen and fields where cockfighting and wrestling once took place. Further north is the unspoiled settlement of Gamblesby. On the tiny village green is a set of stocks, last used to punish someone who'd stolen a turnip. The old church of St John is now a holiday cottage. The main road leaves the Eden Valley, climbing steeply to Hartside Summit. The unusual seating here gives long-reaching views as far as the Solway Firth. The road then descends to Alston, which, along with Buxton, is the joint highest market town in England. The ancient market cross was actually built in 1981, its two predecessors having both been demolished by lorries. Much of the town centre is a designated conservation area. If you continue on the main road, you'll come to Northumberland, the subject of our next movie.